and then if you want one card, yeah. you keep that one card in your hand, put the other two back on top, the and then you can yeah. just mill those blanks away. Yeah. yeah. It's got a lot of versatility, I like it a lot. Although, other than a couple of cards, these are pretty much just all the same the same decks for the most part. No, uh, yeah, these are pretty stuck. That they're still pretty dominant, it's looking like. Yeah, the uh, Temper Steel decks did so well at Worlds. The uh, Channel Fireball team yeah. all had uh, <clears throat> Temper Steel decks and put multiple people into the top eight. Very easily, from what I understand. And it's such a powerful archetype. You, like, your curve is just so strong. If you have a box double draw, you win. Yeah, it's it's a huge really, really hard games. for a lot of decks to deal with. Yeah, I mean, just uh, last week we saw somebody play an S Champion red deck. Yep. And they almost won the tournament with it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that deck's been on Moto for a little while, too. The Edge Champion red deck. I, I, yeah, there, maybe there I just, like, played like against it a few times. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I ever played against it. Maybe I have. I just don't remember. Maybe I'm in the loser's bracket, and that's the problem. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm playing in, the like, the one threes. I don't know. I mean, he almost won the tournament. No, he did, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the, the guys at Moto that I'm playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're not playing against it. Who knows? It seemed like a really fun deck, though. I'm always down for anything that's different. He just threw up on the board. Yeah, and that's the Tempered <laughs> Steel turn one. That is. Here's four points of power. All right, Ben, go. you get to play your land. Go. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I'm going to ponder. Looks like he's got mentally. <coughs> Can't really tell the cards I'm seeing. Now you can Vapor Snag the Hawk. It's not too bad. Yeah. So, a pretty good start by Tempered Steel. Comes, and then, oh, oh uh-oh. Gut shot. You filled the wrong card there in the beginning, but a uh, gut shot is going to put Ben down to 18. David then he's going to take three from the attack and drop a 15 here. Mill's going to go ahead and uh, cast an Origin Spell Bomb before passing the turn. Vapor Snag. And a Vapor Snag is going to get that Hawk back to uh, Nell's hand there. It's a rocky start for for Ben. He's got, he has a little bit of the control that he needs to, to kind of stay alive, but at the same time, Tempered still had a pretty good draw. Now it's just a, the Lonely Memnite coming in. I mean, he's done a good job of uh, making the board a little bit smaller, but you know, the Hawk's going to come back down. <coughs> Uh, Nils probably has more stuff in his hand. Yeah, there's a Vault Scourge. Yeah. And now Ben, you know, has already used his gut shot and he's facing down a Vault Scourge. Alright. Flynn Hawkins Mental Leagues. We need four people for a ten dollar booster draft. The last booster draft of the evening. We need two for a commander five. And seven. Oh he's I don't think he has any more lands out after that. He just drew that glacial fortress. He's Alright, so like a uh, Phantasmal Image will target that Vault Scourge. Or not target it, chooses. Seems like that's Howard Steel. Oh, that's, that's not so good for him. That's a big, big hit. So Ben's going to drop down to 8 here. Nils going to pop back up to 20. And then uh, a Gavany Township comes down. I feel like Gavinning Township is like a really nice um, addition to the Tempered Steel deck. Yeah. Geist. Yeah, that Geist comes Joins down. Joins the fight. I'm surprised Nils there didn't just sacrifice the spell bomb and get an extra three points power on the board. Yeah. And the extra card is. Uh, Especially well, because like a top deck land that comes into play on top just lets him start activating the township too. So yeah, that's true. Like if he draws a spell, he can just play the spell. If he draws a land, he can just start activating township. He's down to he's got one card in hand now and was at zero, so maybe he just wants the card advantage and assumes that he's already in a pretty dominating position. Oh, that's not good. For Ben that is. Yeah, I mean that's it's a pretty big game. No. Ben already missed a land drop last turn, it looks like. Alright. Scours himself. Two islands. And I don't see much he can do at this point.
Looks like he drew the tempered still, so probably gonna end favorably for him. He drew a tempered steel? No, 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 I said it looks like he, well, he did, I mean. In the, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we were talking about I was gonna be like, before. oh yeah, he's just. Oh no, if he, if he drew <laughs> another one, it's definitely game over, but it already looks. That's over the stern. Yeah. As it is now, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's skirt's already, just yeah. gonna get snagged. Yeah. Yeah. Ben's gonna drop down two. Vault Scourge will come back to play, and Arjun Spellbomb will net some card advantage and make a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, there's just about nothing that uh, Ben can do. I mean, the S-Champion even yeah. has protection from everything. Yeah. Yeah. Scoops it up. <coughs> so, I mean, that's what happens. If a, if a Tempered Steel deck draws Tempered Steel against these Delver decks, there is just about nothing they can do. Yeah. They're just so outclassed. They're spending, you know, like one mana and some turns pondering, trying to assemble their three power dudes, while the Tempered Steel deck gets to just drop them to play for zero mana. Tempered Steel is such a, an appealing deck to play. Like, anytime I've, I've wanted to play in a tournament recently, I've, that's always been a deck that I, want, that I consider playing, but I just get talked out of it. And then I see draws like that, and that's kind of what keeps me interested in playing the deck. Yeah, I mean, it just has, it has the most powerful nut draws yeah. of any deck. That's very true. It's like the, uh, in many ways, similar to the uh, the quest deck. Yeah, that's exactly what this, I was thinking about. The, that deck just had like the best yeah, it's like, yeah, draw turn of, two. of any deck ever. Yeah. Start blowing up all of your permanents. I mean, this deck though is not quite as random as that deck. No, it's, it's more not. consistent. Um, it do, it relies very heavily on just drawing the tempered steel. Mm -hmm. Just. And, and yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. But uh, even when it doesn't draw the Tempered Steel, it does, like... It's still a mediocre aggro deck. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's just not fine. a nut deck. Yeah. Whereas the, the blue deck is just very consistent, I, or the, the Delver deck. I really enjoy... I enjoy the idea of it, but I just can't talk myself into playing it that much very often. You know, have this, has anybody really tried making a uh, blue-white Tempered Steel deck where... You know, they cut a lot of the fat from this list, and they just play a bunch of ponders and taxium probes, so they can they can find their temper steals more often. I think there is a blue a blue white list kicking around somewhere. I think yeah. that a lot of people just go with the green, so they have yeah, the, the uh, township, the township, yeah, or just the the solid white one. Let's take yeah, a look at their sideboard and see what they might be bringing in here. Ben, he's got mental missteps, which seem okay, and the divine offering obviously comes in. Ratchet bombs, very good still. Revoke existence. He's definitely got some Tempered Steel hate, which he's going to need to draw a lot of. Yeah, um, Nils has uh, two Mental Missteps, which will definitely be coming in. And uh, he also has four Shrine of Loyal Legions. I'm not sure if he brings those in or not, but I probably would. I think so? Yeah. Yeah, it seems, it seems fair. Uh, an interesting card in Ben's sideboard is Dungeon Geist. I really like Ooh. that. I like that I like that card out of the new side. It's, it's, it's fun. I, don't, I just don't know... I don't, I'm not sold on it yet. I want I want it to be good, but I mean it could be a good card. Yeah, it could it could. I haven't tried it, so I need to talk to Ben later and find out how he's liking it. Or how often he's brought it in. That's a better. Maybe point. he'll bring it in now. Another interesting thing about Ben's list <laughs> is he's still playing three Rune Chanter Spike. I feel like that a lot of the lists are switching away from that recently, right? That's something that's not nearly as common. Uh, Something that's really interesting to me is that he has Rune Chanter's Pike and does not have Ink Moths. Because I kind of thought the whole point of having Rune Chanter's Pike was having Ink Moth and Invisible Stalker. Very true, yeah. And he doesn't have either of those. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, another. There are a bunch of other really powerful equipment that are legal right now that all give your creatures protection from key colors. Yeah. It's sort of War and Peace is just. Yeah, I know you've played the standard format a good amount, probably. Yeah. Uh, you Lately, can tell yeah, people that Sword of War and Peace is. It just it's insane right now. Yeah, so it's, strong. It's a really good card. He's got two of the Ben has two of those in the sideboard as well, which um, they're probably pretty good in this matchup, right? They're a little slow, but I mean, uh, they make your guy like dispatch and oblivion ring proof, but yeah, none of the guys are really white except for Glint Hawk. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I probably won't be bringing those in. I wonder if uh, the spell skites are going to be coming in here. Yeah, uh, Miles does have two spell skite. Mm -hmm. um, he also has a dispatch, which may come in over the Oblivion Ring. I've never really much liked the Oblivion Ring, 
against the Diller decks. Yeah. It's pretty slow. Um, it's something that it gets mana leaked pretty easily. It's not a very good answer to a one drop. That's yeah, like the, your their face deck in. just plays. Yeah. You know, none of the creatures that they cast are going to cost more than two mana. And not only that, but they're all also like accruing card advantage in some way or another. So he's got Ben's got the start he's looking for. Turn one, Delver. I like the white bordered land. That's, I like it. I like it too. He meant to misstep a yeah. hawk. Club is Delver. Uh, pops Nils down to 19 here. And so let's see what he has for turn two. I believe Ben's Ooh, another already Delver. 18, right? Yeah. There we go. Finally caught up. Tempered still nowhere near as explosive as it was in game one. But, but still, uh, all he and needs is a tempered steel. And all he needs is tempered steel. Okay, exactly. Oh, all they're changes. getting flipped now. People always seem to get so lucky with their uh, Delver <laughs> flips. People like, always flip it like the first or second turn or rewatch them on camera. It's I'm really guilty of that. People, they, my friends hate testing against me because, you know, just play the Delver, auto flip them, and they just start freaking out. It's a lot of oh. Like, it no, actually flips like one in three. Yeah. Like, a lot of time they're just like iron ephemerons that are one ones until they become three twos. Yeah. Giant dust wasps. <laughs> <laughs> so get that mental misstep out of here. And it uh, looks like Nils has, in fact, kept his oblivion rings in. So that's an interesting play by Ben. He has a mana leak in his hand, and he paid for the Gataxa probe, huh? Leaving him unable to mana leak a spell. I'm pretty sure he has a mana leak in his hand. I could just be completely wrong. Um, I guess he was hoping to hit a land off the off the probe. champion, then he's probably going to dispatch an insect. That's what he's thinking about. Now if he can mana leak that, uh, yeah. Alright. I believe then, he has uh, a vapor, vapor snag in his hand. Is what he's thinking about. I don't know if he's going to snag his own guy here, though. That doesn't seem very good. No, it's not what I want to be doing either, but he says okay. It's removed from the game. And no attack with the Glenhawk at all. I feel like it's just a free 20 point, two points of damage uh, that he was missing. Did he activate it? Oh, uh, he cast Dutch Champion. Oh, yeah, you're right. So... Maybe he had a reason. Yeah. All right. So and Nils has an origin spell bomb in his hand. So he's kind of back in this game now. He can trade his uh, idol for the abomination. Well, he thinks he can. He's. It's actually going to get vapor snag when he activates it on his bonus turn. Feeding for two. But uh, Edge Champion is going to just continue applying pressure. The, until the cows come home, so. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, an Oblivion Ring. Now it's gonna get mana leaked. Um, well, he could. Yeah, he mana leaked it. An interesting play would have been to just Vapor Snag his guy with the yeah, Oblivion Ring no, on the stack. He, his opponent would have to remove one of his own artifacts. That would make that, craft. yeah, he'd make him lose his metal craft, which is. Would have been pretty huge. Yeah. He's now metal craftless again until he gets to play this Flint Hawk Idol. Or activate a Nexus. I'll probably play the Flint Hawk Idol again. Yeah. Go for another trade. And uh just kinda attack for two. Don't miss the two points again. Yep. If Nils loses and bends it two, he's gonna be very upset. That's always the worst. It. I've seen it happen. Yeah, I've done it before. We all have. 
I've done it before too. Man, it's terrible. Oh, he's got a Snapcaster. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And that'll be enough. And double decks on the play. Still, I mean, it's just such a powerful thing to be doing. It is. Especially got pretty lucky with the flip. Yeah, again, that, that like was going a huge, two and a huge part of that one. Right away. Yeah. Now, uh, I was wondering if uh, people thought that, you know, because Ray of Revelation got printed and people are expecting a lot of humans with, or token decks that have cards like Honor of the Pure and Tangible Virtue, I was wondering if people were going to start playing Ray of Revelation. Uh, as like a way to deal with these powerful enchantments that yeah. people are really trying to use. And if people did start playing Rave Revelation, then that means people are going to have less Ancient Grudges. Because you, you can't really have that many of each. I agree. And then, as a result, a card, a deck like Tempered Steel, you know, suddenly there aren't Ancient Grudges running around. Yeah. That makes a deck like that much better. Yeah, um, well... I feel like uh, the Ancient Grudges are being played in, in other decks than... The decks that they're obviously different colors, but mm -hmm. there's not too many red white decks kicking around right now, are there? And there's like the looting, but the five color control decks, which are really fun right now, and that one would definitely force them to make a decision between Ray and, yeah. and uh, Grudge, but at the same time, there's a lot of ramp decks right now. I played against uh, a couple today already, and uh, I mean, they they don't really have the option, they're just they just have to play Grudge or naturalize it mm -hmm. at best. That makes sense, yeah. Now, uh, with Nils on the play, it's just really, really good for him. I think even if he doesn't draw a Timber Steel, as long as he like curves out properly, I was surprised he kept the Oblivion Ring in there. Uh, had it been a Dispatch, like the Dispatch in the sideboard, then that game would have been much different for him. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see whether or not he brought in the Shrines. We didn't see any in the second game, so... And, you know, I don't really like Glinthawk Idol against uh, decks that are not playing Sorcery Speed Sweepers. Cards like, like, if a deck has cards like Black Sun Zenith or Day of Judgment or Slagstorm, yeah. all of those cards make the Glinthawk Idol really good. And Glinthawk Idol is fine in the other matchups, but in games two and three, you, like, you have a sideboard, and, like, you're supposed to have cards in there that are just generally good. Right. So I don't, I don't really see keeping that card in. I think a Shrine is just much better here. It's just the fact that, you know, on, on the end of your opponent's turn, like, you're, you guys are just basically, like, wantonly attacking one another. Yeah. And just making four things. Yeah. Pretty huge. It's pretty pretty good. Uh, how many token decks have you guys seen today? Uh, we saw one green-white token deck. Okay. And we saw Shaheen, but he's playing, like, a Super Friends. Yeah, I actually, I played against Shaheen, and I, I beat him game one, and I put him on, like, a token list and sideboarded for tokens, and then he just super friends planeswalkered me out. So, it was a, a pretty tricky list. It was a really good list, though. Shaheen's a very, very good player. Yeah, and he's just a really good deck builder, too. Yeah. Now, uh, Ben has a uh, mental misstep in hand, but Nils played around it by casting a turn one Vault Scourge. When he draws in his paper stack, that bodes well for him. Uh, that'll let him, in many ways, play the game he wants to be playing here. He does have the Tempered Seal. He just showed it. So All right, so he drew a Tempered Seal off the top. He's going to put Ben down to 19 and put himself back at 19 with an attack of Vault Scourge. And does Nils draw the land he needs? Doesn't look like it. All right, I would lead with Origin Spell Bomb and see if I get Ben to bite. All right, he leads to Signal Pest. That's going to get a Mental Misstep. Yep. And then... Now he plays he's the bomb, I guess. Yeah. Cast the bomb. I've probably done that in the reverse order as well. And I mean, Ben had seen his hand, so yeah. Ben's probably just going to wait for the, uh, the Vault Scourge and counter that anyway. Okay. But, I mean, you always give your opponent the opportunity to make a mistake, right? Yeah, exactly. Looks like he just drew a Geist. Okay. 
Geist comes down. Huh. I feel like that's a really awkward play. Just because Niels could be... He missed a land drop last turn. He could have missed it on purpose just to kind of force a play like that and then get the Tinkered Steel to stick. Um, unfortunately, it does not look like Niels actually missed a land drop on the block. Yeah, no, Niels, Niels did, did miss his land drop oh. on turn two, but he drew one right now. Okay, okay, so... I didn't see his hand. Maybe he did that intentionally, and... But yeah, that was... Now he gets an uncontested... Wait a minute. I guess he's not going to play the Tempered Steel. Oh, that's very odd, actually. Yeah, I, I... I don't understand why you wouldn't just take every opportunity to... To get the Tempered Steel to resolve, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then again, Edge Champion, I mean, it perhaps Nils has a great deal of uh, experience with the deck. Yeah. And I mean, the problem is, is that here he just gets blown out by a... Uh, by a Vapor, Vapor Snag, snag yeah. yeah. Snapcaster. Anything. We've got the Star City Games Angel Token joining the battlefield. Very nice. No, it's going to be taking six here then. I think it's unlikely that he'll be able to. Uh... Yeah, I mean. I mean, even if, huh. to be fair, even if he does vapor snag the vault scourge right here, he's still getting to trade with the yeah, with and the then guys. Which... Still has, you know. Yeah. Still I feel like it's a fine cards. position. It's not optimal, obviously, but you know, you still get rid of that pesky guys. And they going to uh, fall down to 16 here. And he slept with the two on after getting to do that. Yeah. Such Temper is silver. the way of the world these days. He does get to resolve the Timbered Steel. And now he's a 3-3 lifelinking mm -hmm. flyer. Mini Bane Slayer. That's such an amazing thing about Timbered Steel. Like, it feels like the game's just been going in favor of Ben. Like, Ben's wanting the things to happen that have been happening. And Timbered Steel just kind of puts him right back where he wants to be. I hear Nails here in block, right? Yeah, probably. I mean, see, I guess he could be afraid of one instant speed enchantment. Is there, there's Ray, is Divine Offering? Divine Offering, is that a instant or sorcery? I don't remember. Um, Divine Offering is, is a uh, instant. Instant, right. It's a revoke but, existence, it's a sorcery. Yeah, it's just for artifacts. Revokes a sorcery. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, oh. yeah, I, I'm not really sure. So Neil's going to go up to 14, Ben's going to go down to 14, balances the scales again. And a Glenhawk Idol comes down for Nils. And that's, again, it's a big, big creature in this spot. He just drew a Vapor Snag that's very helpful. Pike. Ooh, a rune shatter spike. Pike. Bash. All right. I believe a. Uh... Make a guy. Draw a card. And that guy is probably going to trade with this guy. So, <clears throat> Nils chooses to trade the idol, it looks like? No, no, okay. That gut shot in his hand is not looking very... 
very saucy right now. Well, we finally found a token that they're both happy with. It's good enough. <laughs> An ooze token. <laughs> <clears throat> not a, not quite a mirror, but you know mm. you take what you can get. All right, and Mills is back in solid control of this game. But that Glenhawk Idol had a whole bunch of mana dumped into it already. Yeah, and it hasn't really done much at all. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Traded with a Geist. see some sort of three trap from Nels. I, I assume he's got an etch champion or something. I'm trying to think why you pre-combat it. Okay, etch champion does come down. Um, it gives him metal craft for dispatch, right? Um, it doesn't he only have two artifacts? No, that, that, mirrors, oh, that mirror. ooze is a mirror. The yeah. ooze is in fact an artifact. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, here we go. <clears throat> Hi, yeah. All right, so another six, but I'll drop down to eight here. And that's two swings from an S champion. I'm gonna ponder here, probably. That champion is pretty scary with Hammer Steel on the battlefield. Yeah, I mean, even but that Vault Scourge is. Protection from Everything. Yeah, that Vault Scourge is like just. It feels like Ben's fighting such an uphill hill battle. He's having to deal 40 points of damage just to k try to kill him. <clears throat> ben has probably already done about 20 points of damage at this point. Yeah. But that's why you play those lifeline cards. Yeah. Have you seen the alternate art for Vault Scourge? I do not believe I have. It's awesome. Is it? Yeah. I do like the alternate for ponder though. But I was actually last time I was in the booth, we were talking about what our favorite ponders are. What's your favorite ponder? That one's mine. I'd say that one's mine too. All right. Let's see if you agree. I think uh, Laura and Ponder looks one. too much too much like Fallen Empires art. I it's, can't it's, take a, it. it's a it's a close second for me. I, I do like the Laura one. one. I could do without the Intendant. It's not my favorite art. <clears throat> he doesn't and like guys just putting his hand up in the air. He's not going to catch any of those balls. No. Uh, M10 art. Yeah. Ben the is, full art's cool though. He's like pondering something. Yeah. Looking at the moon. Yeah. All right, so Ben. Uh, ben is digging ben, very hard right now. Yeah, he is uh, in a rough spot. Pondered and shuffled. He and it looks like he has every spell his deck has access to in his hand, and it's not good enough. He needs second white source day of judgment. Nope, that wasn't it. He can, however, vapor snag a whole bunch of stuff. A token is looking mighty tempting to vapor snag. There's a little bit of a stare down there. Are we about to pump her? Oh, wait a second. <clears throat> um, yeah, that was kind of a weird thing with priority. Yeah, I don't know if really I agree was. with that. He started um, to tap. I think that was a little sketchy on Ben's part, to be honest. Well, he started to tap, and I think Ben probably said, all right, and then the guy the guy backed up. It, it's, it's not really... Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't realize yeah. that Nielsen started uh, he, tapping He his put his hands on the, okay. on the land, and then... So yeah. Ben was like, are you going to do something or not, type thing. Yeah, ben was like... There was probably some communication there that we missed. I feel like he's drawing a never-ending supply of vapor snags. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, is Ben just dead to this attack? No, he's, he's, he just drew another he vapor snag. more snacks. vapor snag? Yeah. 
All right, another Vault Scourge comes down. Nils will drop down to nine. Getting dangerously low here. I don't know why you just didn't roll. Yeah, I mean... I'm just trying to get a metal crafting. All right. Bounce. Bounce that. Replay the Edge Champion. Make a guy. It's him down to eight. Yeah, and then... Huh. How many... I can't tell. I can't count. He's, oh, there we go. They're counting four, five. Looks like six. Yeah, I think all three of his Vapor Snags. Oh, he plays four. Okay. Yeah, I like playing four Vapor Snags in that deck. But... Yeah. He seemed to have drawn three of them already. Yeah. Is one of the remaining cards in his hand the fourth snack? No, it looks like Gutshot, uh, Gutshot Mana Leak or Ponder maybe? I don't know. All right. So the Glenhawk Idol comes back down for Nils. And again, we're seeing Glenhawk Idol, not the best thing in this matchup. Yeah, I think what he wants to do here is, he wants to make a guy, but he also wants, I think he has a Mana Leak, he wants to, yeah. Um, Yep. Yeah, like, yep. Yeah, and that's gonna yep. happen here. <clears throat> Snap ends down to one card. And he's dead to this Vault Scourge on board. And he's dead to the Origin Spell Bomb on board. And he's gonna pass the turn back. I think Ben might just have to pack it in. He's only got one card in his hand. It's a gut shot. Draws an island. Yeah, I mean, it's just. Unless he gets high tide this turn, <laughs> I don't think uh, no. he has much of a chance. Flip. Make a guy, and that'll do it. And he gets a robot. Or and the robot's coming to the red zone. Robot. All right, and that's it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, there we go. All right, so Mills Talpingrud. Looks like he is continuing his exile streak here, playing Tempered Steel yeah. with Green for Gavney Township. It seems like he knows pretty the cool deck, deck pretty well. Uh, apparently better than we do. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played it for a long time. I I don't think I've ever played Tempered Steel. I played uh, against as, it. Never played as a building out a budget columnist, Tempered Steel is something that you often come back to because there, there are key... Uh, there are time periods where those cards get very low in value, yes. and you're able to build a deck that's like a legitimately very competitive deck. Yeah. That's also very inexpensive. I mean, so. it's probably one of the cheaper. If you if you subtract Even the now, box yeah. locals, it's probably one of the cheapest decks you can buy. Yeah. And you think is, even with the Mox Opals, as far as like competitive tier one decks go, yeah. this has got to be bottom the barrel. Yeah. It's and it's not bottom of the barrel as far as how good it is. Correct. It's actually incredibly powerful. Yeah. If you want to go to a tournament and win the tournament,